Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This is Minister Paul, a watchman on the wall in Northern California, Thursday, June 28th. This is day 85 in intercessory prayer. And Jesus blessed me today in a mighty way with encouragement and strength and peace and love to continue. And uh, I just want to share it with others. I'm actually led to share this with others. <clears throat> um, just laying out prostrate, listening to worship music and surrendering myself to Christ Jesus. He began speaking to me through his word. And the word was, is that God is not angry at you. He sees your good witness for Christ. And he will not appoint you to his wrath. His wrath is his anger. And so I want to show you scriptures that confirmed that. There's five of them. But I want to share something else with you to encourage you, to encourage the, the body of Christ, that we're one, and God's not angry with this. Here in Northern California, in the summer, we get these fires, and, and so Southern California is the same way, but and there isn't a lot of breeze off of the Delta, so the air just becomes stagnant. If I were to walk out any of my doors right now into the outside, front, back side, it wouldn't matter. In any direction, all you can see is smoke. And the smoke just will literally lay over this valley we're in here and just look like pollution. And they will label the air as bad. They're called bad air days, unhealthy air. And uh, <clears throat> it literally can sting your eyes just to go outside gloomy kind of you know and that's how it's been here and then add into that you know triple digit weather <clears throat> yesterday was 108 in Sacramento it's projected to be around 102 to 108 for you know seven days straight and we're like right in the middle of it and so you get this triple digit temperature ongoing you know for several days with this smoke in the air and uh it can really affect, you know, how you feel. And uh, I said all that not to complain because I have no complaints about anything in my life right now after being in the presence of Jesus Christ through prayer and supplication. I said all that to share something with you and perhaps maybe you could go try it. I was laying down, I was listening to worship music and I was just thanking Jesus for these words he gave me, his words, these scriptures, and this confidence and blessed assurance that uh, he's not mad at me, and that he won't me appoint he won't appoint me to wrath, and I'll be with him soon, and you will be with him soon. And I was just thanking him, and all of a sudden Jesus he said, <clears throat> "Breathe in my kingdom." I'm laid out prostrate, and I just I said yes, Jesus, and I took in a slow breath. And all I felt was his presence, his power, his atonement, his love, and his peace. And I took in about three deep breaths of the kingdom of God. And he reminded me, you're not of this world. You're of the kingdom, for I purchased you. I ransomed you at a great price of my own life. Not much longer, he said. <clears throat> this won't last forever because you're not appointed to the wrath to come. <sighs> Thank you, Jesus. I could stop right there, you know, just go back in there and pray again. <clears throat> but let me show you some scriptures. He showed me all these scriptures and I want to put them out to YouTube and share them with you. He led me to 1 Timothy 6.12. And it says, fight the good fight of faith. And we're all doing this, amen. And then watch this. Just let the word of God minister to your spirit. It says, lay hold on eternal life. That's, that's us in heaven together, saints. Whereunto thou art also called. <clears throat> I want you to understand this. The, I, I 
confess Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior right now. And I ask you to do that also. He called me. I just want to make a confession of his mercy and grace. Could I do that? He called me to eternal life out of sin. He paid for my sin. Called to eternal life through my faith. And so, yes, I'm in a battle today. I'm in a, a fight of faith. Hallelujah, because he put all things under our feet and he's fighting all these other things the devil wants you to worry about or accuse you of or say that you are when you're not. We just have faith. We have faith in his grace. And Jesus will take over that fight. Don't allow it to get in your head. Don't allow the enemy to get in your head. Don't allow nothing to get in your head but Jesus Christ and Christ crucified for you and what he's done for you and what he will continue to do for you and where he's taking you to. It says... And, and, and he's talking about us and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. Jesus told me today, I am pleased with your heart and I have seen you continually stand in me through faith and confess me. And I'm not just talking to myself. He told me, share this with anyone else willing to listen. He, I'm not mad at you. I'm pleased with your witness and you will overcome by the blood and your testimony <clears throat> the next scripture talking about not a, being appointed to wrath now let, let me just say this a, a, as a watchman and there's so many of us that are watchmen in these end times we 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 accepted this call we counted the cost and we live a life of warning others our family members people on youtube facebook Anybody willing to listen, we, we warn them of what we see going around in the world and how it ties into what Jesus said would be in the end times, and we warn them how close we are. And having done this for several years, it can get hard. It can get tough. It can cause division and fights. It can wear on your spirit. When you see all these things, and, and you can get to a point uh, where you can say, well, where are you, Jesus? I see all these things happening. I see the love of many waxing cold. I see the wars, the rumors of wars, the earthquakes, the, the spirit of the Antichrist, all the laws they're changing, what they're doing to our children in school and the murder and the killings. And where are you? Have anybody else ever felt like that? How, how farther are we going to have to go into this? And then you can go to bed at night thinking, you know, I don't know how long I'm going to have to go into this, but it's not looking good. And then suddenly Jesus will just show up and confirm his word. And he did that for me today. And he's doing it for you also. Share this message with others, please. Put it on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Reload it, remix it. It's the word of God. And it's forever settled in his kingdom. It says, for God has not appointed us to wrath. <clears throat> in other words, his anger. God is angry at sin, and, and you can search the entire scriptures front to back. He's angry at disobedience and those walking outside of his will. But you need to understand we are not of those. We are not. It says his, the wrath of God lays on the sons of disobedience. But we are not disobedient. We were purchased by Christ and called to eternal life and to his glory. And he died for us with his blood. What we couldn't do to atone for our sins, Jesus did for us. And he's forever making intercession for us right now. Right now, wherever you may be in the whole world, Jesus died for you. He loves you. I said, I'm, he says, I'm not mad at you. And I'm praying for you. And I have angels to come minister to you. Just hold on a little longer because this isn't forever, Jesus is saying. He says, so we're not appointed to wrath but to obtain salvation by the shedding of the blood of Christ. We got salvation, not wrath. <clears throat> A couple more scriptures. Please help me share this message. People need encouragement today. There's enough beat, beating down and enough accusations from the enemy to last another thousand years. People need encouragement today. The Bible says comfort one another with these words. Jesus is coming, saints. That's the message. And he's not mad at you. He's pleased at your faithful witness. It says, John 3, 3, 6, all of these given by the Holy Spirit today. 
He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. I believe in Jesus Christ and he's my everything. I fall short, I sin, I'm forgiven, I repent, I die daily, I'm crucified with Christ, it's no longer I that live, but Christ lives in me. I can breathe in the kingdom of God and not smoky air and heat. I believe. Do you believe? It says, it says so we have everlasting life in heaven. It's awaiting us. He went there after his death to go prepare a place for us. He promised. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life. But see, you see, it says, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Who? Not us who believe in, in Christ and, and have his will for our life, but those in disobedience who are against his will. If you are walking in the love of Christ and you know he's your savior and you're doing everything you can to stay in his will, then his wrath will not fall on you. You've been appointed to everlasting life according to this word. Another scripture, Romans 5, 8 through 11. I'll put links to all these in the description box. It says, but God commanded his love towards us not his anger or wrath, his love. In that while we were sinners, even while we were tore up for the floor, even before we were born again, even before we were confessing him as, as Christ, even before we were telling others about him or making YouTube videos or creating a Facebook saying this is dedicated to Jesus, before any of that, he loved us and commanded his love towards us while we were sinners and Jesus Christ went to the cross for us. What a love. Let's not forget his love today. And it says much more than being now justified by his blood. If you're listening to this and you believe in Christ as your personal savior and you're walking in his will by your faith in his grace, you've been justified by the blood he shed on Calvary. And it says we shall be saved from wrath through him, not through us, through him. It's through him, Christ Jesus, that we live and move and have our being. And we will forever be with him. We will never face the anger and wrath of God. Hallelujah. Come, Lord Jesus. It says, for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of Jesus, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life, what he did. Are you walking in his will? Are you be obedient to him? Are you sharing his word? If so, he's pleased with your heart. That, that soft heart. We don't have hearts of steel, do we, saints? No, the devil is a liar. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement, the payment of for our sins gives us everlasting life and Jesus is coming again he told me today he's coming again and I put my faith and trust in him he don't lie he gave me this Colossians 3 1 through 4 this was the last scripture I received while closing out my prayer to my Christ our Savior our Jesus if ye be been risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, amen, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God, and set your affection on the things above, not on the earth. Breathe in the kingdom of God right now, the peace, the love, the holy protection of you and your loved ones, knowing he loves you with an unfathomable love that you can't even imagine how much he loves you. For ye are dead, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. I am sitting here making this video, breathing in the kingdom of God, hidden in the anointed Messiah who died for me because I accept his salvation, and I have faith in him, and I walk in his will, and I obey him. When Christ, who is our life, everlasting life shall appear then she then shall ye also appear with him in glory you have an appointment with glory god is not mad at you 
Rejoice, rejoice, rejoice in him today. Tell others about him today. Testify. Can I get a witness? God bless you. Shalom.